This film was a school project for Mrs. Claire Johnson's Latin class. It was produced our junior year at Pattonville High School, December 20, 1962, and was shot with a Bolex 8mm handheld movie camera on standard Kodak color film stock. Hi, my name is Wayne Smith, and I uh, wrote, produced, and directed this film in December 1962. The film begins with a little uh, special effects here on the main title sequence. Aeneas, Polyphemus Quay, Osprus, Aeneas, and the cruel uh, Cyclops. And then you see uh, the cast, really, first, and then the crew, the cast of Kurt and Daryl as the two main characters, Aeneas and Achates, and then Dave Veenan, who was our uh, our monster, Paul Famous, uh, a good friend of ours. And then you see later here, uh, Gary and uh, myself as kind of the main crew guys uh, and, and gophers for this whole thing. Nostra fabula incipit dum Aeneas et Acates in regionem illam eran. Our story begins while Aeneas and Acades are wandering in that aforementioned land. Aeneas was the son of Anchises and Venus, the goddess Venus, by the way. He was a cousin of King Priam of Troy and was the leader of Troy's Dardanian allies during the Trojan War. After the fall of Troy, he led a band of Trojan refugees to Italy and became the founder of Roman culture, although not of the city of Rome itself. He was the mythical progenitor of the Julian Gens through his son Ascanius, or Eulus. And Virgil made him the hero of his epic, the Aeneid. In the Trojan War, Aeneas was one of the most respected of the Trojan heroes, perhaps second only to Hector. He engaged in abortive single combat with the Greek heroes Diomedes, Idomeneus, and Achilles. Twice he was rescued through the intervention of gods. When Troy was sacked by the Greeks, Aeneas fought on until he was ordered by the gods to flee. He finally left the city carrying his father and the household gods, the Panates, on his shoulders. His wife Creusa was lost in the confusion, but his son Ascanius escaped with him. Aeneas and the Trojan remnant then wandered across the Mediterranean, hounded by the enmity of Juno. In one of the most famous episodes of the Aeneid, they were cast ashore near the North African city of Carthage, where they were hospitably received by Dido, the city's founder and queen. There ensued a love affair between Dido and Aeneas, which threatened to distract Aeneas from his destiny in Italy. Mercury was sent to order Aeneas to depart, and Aeneas, forced to choose between love and duty, reluctantly sailed away. Dido, mad with grief, committed suicide. When Aeneas later encountered her shade on a trip to the underworld, she turned away from him, still refusing to forgive his desertion of her. Said, hey, it your homes all to your best. But alas, the journey is more wearisome than the mountain high. In Italy, Aeneas allied himself with King Latinus and was betrothed to Latinus's daughter. Lavinia. Lavinia's former suitor, Turnus, goaded by jealousy and the machinations of Juno, declared war against the intruder and a period of bloody fighting, the Italian Wars, followed. Aeneas was victorious, eventually killing Turnus in single combat, and went on to found the city of Lavinia. At the end of his life, Aeneas was deified at the request of his mother Venus and became the god Indiges. In the Aeneid, Aeneas's most common epithet is pious, and Virgil presents him as the exemplar of the Roman virtues of devotion to duty and reverence for the gods. Polyphemus is the giant son of Poseidon and Tusa in Greek mythology, one of the Cyclops described in Odyssey. His name means abounding in songs and legends. Polyphemus first appears as a savage man-eating giant 
in the ninth book of Homer's Odyssey. He appears in book three of the Aeneid. In those lines, Virgil describes how Aeneas observes Polyphemus as he leads his flocks down to the sea. They have encountered Achaemenides, who retells the story of how Odysseus and his men escaped, leaving him behind. The giant is described as, as descending to the shore using a, quote, lopped pine tree, unquote, as a walking staff. Once Polyphemus reaches the sea, he washes his oozing eye socket and groans painfully. Achaemenides is taken aboard Aeneas's vessel and they cast off with Polyphemus in chase. His great roar of frustration brings the rest of the Cyclops down to the shore as Aeneas draws away in fear. Finis, loosely translated as, that's all folks. I hope you enjoyed our little film. Thank you very much. Kurt Walbrink played our pious hero Aeneas Daryl Pepper was faithful Achates, his closest and most virtuous friend, with Dave Veeman inhabiting the challenging role of a merciless, savage Cyclops. Gary Wallace crewed the entire production. Our filming location was Creefcore Park. We made Dave's mask from a plaster of Paris mold of his face with one marble eye in the center of his forehead. I think we may have painted it a flesh tone color. During shooting, Dave fell and was injured with a nasty scrape on his torso. In typical Dave Veeman fashion, however, he refused medical attention and we incorporated his bleeding wound in the final cut. At the time, we were in the midst of reading Virgil's Aeneid. In class, Mrs. Johnson often required that we translate in verse. Reading aloud was one of her favorite things. She loved the idea of us hearing the dactylic hexameter directly so that we could better appreciate the rhythm and passion of Virgil's epic song ourselves, just as she imagined the ancient Romans had. Accordingly, she was scrupulous in having us use the proper ancient Roman pronunciations, not, for example, the modernized or Italianized variants, only hard C's, like the C in canoe, V pronounced like W, only sibilant S's like the S and C. We, of course, also had to learn how to scan the poetry and recognize those fifth foot spondees that always alerted us to conflict or discontinuities of some kind in the story content. In retrospect, she was perhaps one of my most influential teachers. The uh, English translations uh, and errors are all mine and of course 53 years after the fact but I can see uh, I can still see Mrs. Johnson now sort of standing in front of her desk like she used to do brushing away such a feeble excuse <laughs>